Hey there, Droya here, and welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Today we take flights in the A320 again in Air Canada colours on a flights from here in Toronto to Montreal. So flight time's about an hour today, nice, uh, nice and short flights. Find the aircraft that we are hopefully used to now, which just uh, pretends that um, London's uh, Tarlin never happened. And uh, yeah, it should overall be a rather good flight this, so jump in the cockpit, set the aircraft up, and prepare ourselves for flights very shortly. And yes, you guys have asked for it, we are flying in the snow today. In reality, the weather right now in Canada is a bit cloudy, but not completely uh, covered over. But hey, I thought, the time of year, make it seasonal, we'll go right into that. So, batteries on, external power set. Uh, no fuel yet, no traffic on the way, so I'll turn the traffic on later. Pleats on, crisp light active on the magic lights. Nav lights on, automatic strobes. Set the temperatures probably towards the hotter ends today, just keep the aircraft nice and warm. I've only ever been on one flight where they've actually used the warm air conditioner, and now it's a flight from. It was not to Finland. The flight to Finland was actually using the cold air. It was, uh, well, not cold air, but just average air. I think it was a flight back from Milan, or potentially even uh, Venice one time. But, uh, yes, right, so that's all set. If you want to wait for the fuel truck to arrive, that's all fine. That's all fine. Down to the FMS. Let's start programming this flight. So, departing from Charlie Yankee Yankee Zulu to Chang Charlie Yankee Uniform Lima. Uh, thank you, William. Thank you for the, uh, yeah, it's just for, again, Christmas jumper. Why not? It's that time of year. <laughs> just wait till you see what I've got in a couple of weeks. What I've got planned in a couple of weeks will be uh, so much better than this. Right, so, RS is lining. The flight plan cost next needs to be six and our cruising altitude today flight level three five zero thirty five thousand feet right uh quick check for the fuel truck see if that's anywhere near us uh if not then we'll just do the fueling via the menu to be fair i wouldn't be surprised if the uh fuel truck managed to get lost in the snow very very thick today be very careful taxiing out especially landing will be fun Landing will be very fun. Right, so let's see if fuel truck anywhere, so we'll just use the uh, menu for that. Cool, so fuel required today is uh, over here 11,722 pounds. 11,729. So pop open this. Put you in. Probably need too much of fuel tanks here. That's pretty much almost there. 729. 725, 724. Oh, just, just, just under, just under. So 26% will be perfect. We're really burning fuel. It actually drops there for a second. Mm, so, uh, Rex Snowwear, we're just using the standard preset snow weather today. So, in Discord and on the stream, I asked people do they want live weather? Do they want snow? Everybody voted for snow, so we're sticking with the uh, snow today. So put the fuel in, let's now plug our weights in. So zero fuel weight is going to be 49.2. Our centre gravity 22.9. And our block fuel on board is 5.52, 5.5. That is good to go. Sorry about the hair. When we're in this cut next week, that should be a bit less of a problem. <laughs> Uh, we have fly from Belfast. One day I will. One day. Oh, bye F350. Uh, you have a good one, I guess. <laughs> right, that is fine. Next we'll go to... Well, before we even do that, let's say hello to passengers, shall we? So, start a flight. So, there we go. Uh, Toronto to Montreal. Air Canada 408, 55,000 feet. 51 minute flight to 55. And departure will be in approximately we'll say quarter past, so 20, 19 minutes. An A320 Neo, 183 people on board, so almost full aircraft today, just under full class seat, 183 on board. Uh, Air Canada's A320, do they have Wi Fi? I believe they do. They don't have entertainment, so we have got boarding music for Air Canada, we have got a safe room for Air Canada. Snack service, yes, meal service, no. And with that, let's uh, start boarding, shall we? Right, so we'll uh, program our flight plan now. Also, I've done a bright spot on the uh, MTDU there, I haven't done that yet. And let's plug in our waypoints. So, starting with 
tonic. We fly to Bomet. Sendu. Iptos. And Avon. Perfect. Insert that. Good to go. Let's greet the passengers and let's do the rest. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome aboard this Air Canada Flight 408 from Toronto Pearson to Montreal. Flight time today is about 55 minutes. We're looking relatively cloudy, relatively snow at the moment. So again, the aircraft warm you up and for ourselves for departure. Well, any questions, please have a crew today. Otherwise, we hope you sit back, relax, and enjoy Flight Air Canada today. Alright, so that'll be the public address. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome aboard this Air Canada Flight 408 from Toronto, Pearson to Montreal. Today, about 55 minutes. The price for everything. Uh, yes, this is live time. Yeah, We're using live time today. Right, so. Well, any questions, please come through today. Otherwise, we hope you sit back, relax, and enjoy the weather Canada today. Fair down to MCDU, and let's carry on with our setup. So, set up on departure now, which will be runway 33 right via the. Iclen 2 departure. I think there's ATC actually, I should probably check with that. ATC, nope, we're only on one com, Unicom 1 2 8 today. So, Iclen 2 it is. Put that in. Uh, no transitions inside that. That's all fine, only for performance. So, perhaps one for takeoff. Flex attempt is going to be 75. And our V speeds we all set. 1 2 2. One, two, three, and one, two, seven. Perfect. Uh, no, like I say, it's not live weather. People requested I do a snow flight, and so I thought, flying Canada today, might as well just overload the snow. So this is the default snow presets in Microsoft Flight Sim. Default snow preset. Also, I should off the shaders as well. So in Microsoft Flight Sim, there's no dedicated snow textures, but instead it has an overlay. So, like the aircraft, it has like a layer of ice that's maybe a bit too much on it. If you go right down to the ground, you'll notice that it's actually a snow shader. So it's not a snow texture, but it's just a layer that goes on top of the ground and creates the uh, reflective snow effects you can all see today. So it's not a texture, but actually it's an entire snow shader, an entire new level for the uh, sim to enjoy. So, get to... Uh, Enjoy some of that today. Right. Back in the cockpit. Let's carry on the setup. Also, turn up right some of these displays. I haven't done that yet. Um, let's grab the me time information. We're going to do that via the... Also, hello, Theo. How are you doing? What's your chat? Sorry, let's say hello to you that. Right, let's go to the um, AOC menu. Let's get a weather request now. So, put the meet up for both airports. Send that. Give it a few seconds. And eventually, we'll pop up on here. Seeing that it's received. Uh, that's all fine. That's all fine. Fine, we're filling aircraft now, so see bus on, no smoking should actually be automatic anyway. See bus on, that's all fine. We have now received the message, company message sent. So let's go back to you. Go back to you. No received messages, there we go. Uh do the meantime information. And that's what you want. So give me a second. Right, so it's 3 to 0 at 30 knots, uh, about 50 miles of visibility, a few clouds at 300, that's that, altimeter tune, do they use um, altimeter in inches rather than the uh, hexapascals in Canada, I did not know that. Well, 2997, now you know, that's all fine. And the arrival airport, uh, Montreal, it's going to be 280, 12 knots gusting 22, gosh, okay, that'd be fun. Uh, 20 miles visibility, uh, scattered clouds at 600, broken at 700, quite low cloud base. Altimeter 2974. Okay, we'll be very careful about that. Uh, right, so altimeter 2997. Set you up to our cruising altitude, 8 level 350. Uh, these 
Interesting, okay, did not know that. So 35,000, race climb, 3,500 minutes. What a nice steep climb out today. Oh yes, everybody, once you've pushed back and disconnected from the pushback tug, remind turn on the anti-ice. When the pushback tug disconnects, anti-ice come on, remember that. Also, then way too far, not 2-5, not 3-5. Seconds... Two eight two seven two six two five. Perfect. Thank you and welcome aboard. Factor on and on. What is that? Let's uh, pop open the passenger map. See how it's looking. Got a few people left aboard, but looking relatively calm at the moment. Go through the uh, passenger manifest. Let's see if we uh, have anybody we recognise on board. Hmm, there's a name similar to someone I know, but nope. Quite a few similar names to people I know in real life on this aircraft, but uh, nobody quite, quite there yet. Nope, and then no Jared's either, so we're going to be in alright flights. 183 passengers aboard today, so quite a uh, quite heavy aircraft. Um, hey Jared's, no Jared's today. Merry Christmas, where Chris uses your music. Uh, how do you calculate center gravity and flex temps? Center gravity calculates um, via the instant menu. Flex temps I'll go through at some point in a full tutorial, given that the A20 calculator I used to use no longer exists. So I'll go through that in more detail later on. Um, all the information you can get are there, asks, says Luca. I presume you're talking about sim brief. Um, center gravity, instant menu. When I fly to Algeria, Algeria do at some point, but today I'm flying from Canada. And Ruben, I'm not sure what you're saying there, Ruben, but it's obviously party message and made it through. Right, so we're almost on with the boarding now. I have to put the flight plan, I'm happy with that. So I'm very sure such a short route, so I'm have too many problems with the uh, with the routing. So parts of the north, head to the east, that's fine. Pretty much a straight line path into Montreal. It's a very, very simple flight, this one. Mini up departure, looks like a right hand turn. Keep that, that one. Uh, Cleep filler, thank you very much. Look up behind us now, moving, there we go. I'm a little bit active at the airport right now, just five decks over that. Relatively active, there's a tower just about poking behind the sun there. Uh, not live weather, we're using default preset weather, like I've said. People request me to fly in snow, so we're flying with the uh, snow presets today. Before I forget, we're going to turn on the predictive wind shear and the uh, squawk box there for Tara and Auto. Uh, Toronto Vancouver. At some point we'll do Toronto to Captain Vancouver for sure. There, Joe Bob Chelsea Chat, how are you doing? How are you doing? Right, that's all fine. At this stage, we are now literally just waiting for the passengers to board. Once the passengers are boarded, we're ready to go. We'll uh, turn on the APU now, give us a bit of a head start. There we go. <clears throat> Most people are now in their seats actually, it's just the. Uh, few more at the end here that aren't yet on the airplane. It's about 25, 30 passengers left. So, really not that long to go at all. Oh, it's wrong. How are you doing, Miro? Uh, you live in Toronto. Move back to Saskatoon. Very nice. Uh, PC arrives up tomorrow. Very nice, Benny. Enjoy it. Greece and Montreal. Welcome, Benny. How are you doing? So I've attracted every single Canadian on the stream today. Nice to have you all. So, we are... Good, that's all fine. Passengers are boarding. My face is very yellow, actually. I just realised I don't have my uh, lights filter in place. Uh, give me a second. Why oh, no, it's appearing so bright? Uh, no, I have to do, I guess. Try and adjust that a little bit. There, that's better. That's a bit more natural. That's a bit more natural. Alright, there's my water bottle. I've put it behind me, haven't I? Yep, You're just Paddy and Ray Dane. Cool, so passage boarded. APU is starting. How many empty seats? Oh, like three, can't be many. Uh, one, two, th oh, one, two, three, four, five. S Ooh, sat there, okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's nine empty seats today. An almost full house. 
This is a bit one side. It's a bit one sided, isn't it? I'll need to uh, adjust that at some point. Right. I think I my, my my head. Yeah, my head's not sensitive to the camera, so it's just like if I did. I don't know. I'm trying to position myself later. Right. Um. Oh, yeah, APU's available. That's fine. I'll turn on the APU leads. Give it a few seconds, and the external power comes off. Uh, didn't like the bonus M4, it was a constant time near for 2330. Each slide this M4 because the work around the AP didn't work. Now that's M4, very nice, Duca. Very nice. I mean, I've got no problem. There's no aircraft in the sim I really don't like, apart from the uh, the Diamonds DA. Uh, the one I flew on the group flight, the 24, I think it is, something like that. Don't like that aeroplane. It's. <laughs> well, now I know it's really, really underpowered. I'm not sure if that's just a sim thing in real life, but very underpowered in the sim, so I'm trying to avoid that one in the future. There's no rare craft in the scene that I particularly have a disliking for. 9 out of 10, they're doing your rights. Make sure you're on Unicom, 1, 2, 2, decimal 8. Right, let's uh, go for push and start now. So we'll turn on the beacon light, so that ground crew is ready to push and start. Engine ignition comes on today. We won't uh, forget about that this time. <laughs> let's uh, pop open pushback helper. And let's call the tug over. Jet bridge now moves out of the way, and everything starts moving into position. Gentlemen, and welcome aboard flight 408. The service to Montreal. Uh, yes, we are running the 8 through next mod. Uh, one box of flight sim. I enjoy it. I enjoy it, Mr. Sure Russian person, name person. How are you doing? Welcome, Fantastic Library. Time. How are you doing? Welcome, Chalk to Chat. How are you today? In a full upright and locked position for departure. Cabin crew, prepare cabin for departure. Uh, how to get the custom views on some base 7 because 43 like yeah same base number generally quite simple all right so pushing is now starting engine one starts the n2 has come to life so i've done that correctly this time and now let the uh safety briefing do its thing a little bit of a pushback for your request to turn nose goes right turn to the left Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the screen for an important Welcome to the decade. Thank you for flying with us. Uh, jet 2 flight from Belfast one day, Cool, so we're in the pushback process here. Thank you, uh, Carl. Uh, which airport's Yankee X-Ray Zulu? Which airport's that? I recognise. Is that um, Quebec? I think. Probably wrong with that one. And Chasing, thank you, Martin. Thank you for remembering that. If Sim had the proper effects for the uh, spraying um, anti-ice machines, I'd use it, but uh, I'm afraid it's not on this occasion. Right, let's do a quick flight control check now that the engine one hydraulic systems are all active. Elevators set, ailerons set, rudder set, speed brakes set. We will arm that, flaps down one, back to engine page. Engine is available and stable, so turn off the ignition. APU comes off. Uh, London, Ontario, that's okay. Um, at some point, we can do for sure. At some point we definitely can, especially now that it's in the winter. Canada becomes a very, very pretty place to fly to and from. Alright, that's all set. We will turn on the taxi lights now. And let's head over to the runway. How do you put it like that? Well, we can use Shift P for the um, 
attack on trials, and then I use a tool called Pushback Helper to, uh, well, push back. Since the ground is a little bit covered in snow, we have to a little bit of and just get ourselves going. I'm going to be up on idle, but today, definitely a little bit of a push. Welcome to Spectre Hey Doing, welcome to the channel, welcome to the chat. So there are a few moments of uh, peace where the visibility opens up a bit, but for the most part, definitely looking quite a covered day. Uh, do you play Arms Manager? No, no I don't, Tamir. My brother does, my brother adores that game, but Airlines Manager, not me I'm afraid. Maybe one day. Uh, flight time today, about 55 minutes. Uh, title, about 55 minutes. On my 3 3 right departure, so not a very long taxi. Which is in front of us, make a left, down to the end, and depart. Uh, livery, flying an air can in the colours today. Finding Air Canada colours. How are you doing? Yeah, it's going to be the uh, lights now. That's I'm always kind of just, just, just adjusting the lighting. Getting it to uh, look a bit more natural. Very yellow today for some reason. I'll have to change that later. Also, I miss that turn there, slightly off the sense line. Fortunately it's quite a wide tax here, it's not a problem. Uh, can't get a max of flight sim, very nice technicality. It's a very good sim, not perfect, but I personally do enjoy it. So I'm going to make a right, we're going to go for the uh, slightly nicer and clearer taxiway just up ahead. Cheers Kendall, glad you like it. The uh, car drive through. Uh, can we use a second taxi? Yes, we can. So we use that one. Since I'm going to the runway now, if we really wanted to, but uh, we'll go to the end just so we can use the uh, entire length of it. Got to be safe for this uh, weather conditions right now. Very slippery, a little bit windy, but shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, J320, A220, um, I've got no real issue with it. I mean, I'm more of a Embraer person, I guess, for the regional stuff. But uh, I've got no massive thing with the A220. Right, auto brake sets to max. Cabin, check. Take off config, set. Free table checklist, now complete. We'll get the cabin crew to head their seats shortly, and then we will depart. Which bang on time to as well. 12 seconds expected. Aircraft just passed up ahead. Very nice. Uh, not live weather. Not live weather. Like I say, you guys requested me to fly in snow, so flying in snow today. Right. Do a quick visual check. Runway looks clear. Well, <laughs> visual check. Can't really see much apart from maybe a few landing lights. Uh, runway looks clear. We'll quickly announce on Ivel that we're departing. So, Charlie, Yankee, Yankee Zoo traffic. Departing runway 33. Right. Bottle up. Lights on. Cabin crew, seats for departure please. Seats for departure. Cabin crew, seats for departure please. 
face of the pot shot. Right. Into the runway. Slowly enter the runway. It's very. It's going to be a very uh, slow acceleration of speed. That's for sure. Although winds are looking calm. I mean, windstock's not showing too much uh, feedback. All right. See that crop over there ahead of us. So we're allow them to pass. That's a lot. Forty percent. One to a stable. Up to flex. A little bit of down pressure. Just stop the uh, premature rotation. One. Rotates. Positive climb, gear up. About 10 degrees climb. A couple of moments, a right hand turn. Uh, do you have to take off differently when flying slow? Not particularly, Jack. I mean, you've got to be very, you've got to be more careful, I guess, for slight slipping and poor conditions. But the actual takeoff process, uh, throttle back, flaps up. Um, generally, quite the same. Generally, pretty much the same. Uh, weather doesn't really have too much effect on frame rate, James. Not too much of frame rate effect at all. So we've got a, uh, a company message. We'll put it out in a second. Now, let's make a right hand turn, get ourselves onto the intercept. See a little bit of breaking the clouds now, so it's quite a low cloud cover by these things, which is good to see. And we are flying with live time, but not live weather. So, like I said, you guys are requesting me to fly in the snow today, so I thought I'd, uh, well, fly in the snow as you guys asked me to. Nice and clear, nice and clear up ahead. We'll switch over to autopilot now, let that do all the uh, hard work. 4,000, that's a bit of a seat climb out, going down to 3,500. As far as goes, is it? Fair enough. Uh, did your first flight in the ITC today? Was your keeper very rewarding? Very nice, Daniel. Very nice. The first time's always the most difficult. But the more you practice, the better you do become. Uh, do I have to play Eleven? Yes, I do. I have got an X-Men stream planned very soon. Very soon. Uh, transition. Transition, I believe, is not 18,000 Canada, I don't think it is. Uh, no, it's just a standard altimeter now. Continue to climb out. It's very shortly at 10,000. We will switch to what well, switch off landing lights. Uh, there's a freeway scenery at uh, at uh, Montreal Davit on Friday LTA. We are using the default scenery today. Ten thousand landing lights off. So increase speed now. So we're up to ten thousand. Point six. And reduce the rate of climb also to about 2,500 to help the aircraft speed up. Perfect. Uh, welcome back to Tide Doing. Uh, this will be epic with the coming soon. What do you mean by that, uh, Christopher? What's coming soon? Uh, flight time is 55 minutes. 55 minutes today. See, that's not yet. We've got quite a sharp turn coming up, so we'll let us do the uh, turn at Tony first. After Tony, see if our signs come off. Since we're still climbing out and still quite soon to our departure, we get all the uh, get all the harsh turns over and done with before we left, and just to uh, walk around, make things a bit safe in the back. Uh, Taxi seems to start the preparation for flights. What was that? Uh, you need to select it, Daniel. So if you go to the menu. 
there's an option called Expedite Deboarding, and that is how you start the deboarding process. You need to expedite it. If you don't, let's stay in the cabin. Uh, I can't have much we're going to. Uh, Charlie Yankee, Uniform Lima. Yankee, inf uh, yeah. Uh, Charlie Uniform, Charlie Yankee, Uniform Lima. Top of the screen, right there. snow comes ground and so that's not satellite snow so that's all shader based so it's like a basically it's a texture that goes on top of the uh, main textures on the ground but it's slightly laid in a way that it kind of just generates it in a, I guess a more realistic manner very very good way of doing things is it's less texture files more actual transition between the weather seasons Uh, what do you think about the training of Master Airbuses? I'm a bit mixed. Some aircraft looks alright, but especially like the A320. I don't know, the Muskin seems a bit... Mm, it's not for me. It's not for me, if I'm completely honest. I can see why some airlines do it, but... Uh, Muskin some, Muskin some just doesn't quite work. So that's the uh, big turn I was talking about now. So we'll let the aircraft do that, and then we'll uh, switch off the seatbelt signs. Uh, liveries, you can get the liveries off of the liveries mega pack, Kai. Liveries mega pack. Uh, do you use any checklists? Uh, no need, Luca. If you, well, you should be using checklists, but for a flight sim, if you've memorized the basic process, it's not a difficult thing to do. Uh, if I've asked taking an hour to download a game as life, you're doing something wrong. I've should be only a uh, few seconds to download, not an hour. Uh, time the game, uh, what time is it in Canada right now basically? Whatever time it is in Canada, time is in the sim right now, using real time. That's just like buzz soaring there, I can hear. That's uh, a sunset, you can tell. No, it uh, doesn't look like a Magnus. There's no AT out of um, Toronto. It doesn't look like there'll be ATC in uh, Montreal, Milan there. It's all Unicorn today. 122.8. decimal eight. few aircraft around, not too much ATC. There you go, 423. Sharp turn. It's pretty standard uh, game Zuna. Pretty standard. Alright, so let's uh, turn off the seatbelt signs now. Our increase our speed and let us also check out that company message we'll sent back to the menu back to uh, menu received uh, new message just another meta over my check that's fine I'm gonna ignore that right so departed we are now clear uh, graphics settings, it's a mix of high and ultra right now, it's a mix of high and ultra. Uh, it takes an hour to sort live out for some reason. That's strange, when I saw live out, I even checked the tutorial. Download took a few seconds, installation, not long at all either. Uh, Hamburg had an event today, Hamburg had an event, so uh, for some people, it was basically like what I had in Dublin, where you're in the holding pattern for, <laughs> for too long basically. But um, yes, there was an, uh, an event today at uh, trying to this lighting on my cruise. Figure out a way I can do this without. Yeah, 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 there you go, yeah, perfect. Pretty guys can see everything about this uh, fantastic lighting. I need to sort something out a bit more proper. I think that'll be my uh, my next purchase. Proper lighting setup for desk or something. I mean, that's better, but still very yellow. More yellow than it should be. Uh, long flight on a sim. My longest flight in a sim was London to Perth, so I departed from London Heathrow, cruised for 18 hours, landed at Perth, and then when I landed at Perth, did a 30 minute turnaround, took off again, and flew to Melbourne. So both flights combined was about 22 and a half hours. Uh, we're using 
1080p, had it? 1080p. Yeah, it's still too yellow. I need something. I mean, that's too pink. It's too yellow. I'll get it right one day. Lighting, one day. One day, he says. Uh, climb rates. Climb rates was 2,500. Still is 2,500 feet per minute. Uh, can I try a hobby pattern? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. They're not too difficult to set up. Um, Arvaz. Basically, you go to a waypoint, you select the hold option, and then check your amount of course, turn on the right, time distance, and insert. So it's not a difficult process to set up, but we'll see how the routine goes if we need it. Uh, have you tried to update flight sim saying 0%? Uh, no issues with updating Glacier. No updates. Uh, why do you use Mac and not? Because you're supposed to use Mac. Once you're about 10,000 feet, once you're above, sorry, once you're above transition altitude, I should say not 10,000, once you're above transition, uh, you switch from low cloud altimeter to standard altimeter, and also you use Mac for cruise because at the end of the day, once you're at cruising level, you would base your speed off the sound. Not so you don't ever, well, you should be using not for cruising because that differs depending on the wind speeds and all that. With Mac, it's a standardised speed that you'll always be flying at. Um, 2,500 permits, uh, Amir. Not 3,000. 2,500. Permits of speeds. That is a speed, yes. Uh, why does the Canadian airline not have German registration, does it? Uh, I don't think so. Charlie Fo Charlie's a Canadian... Uh, German is... Uh, D, isn't it? Delta. D. XXXX. Canada, it's Charlie. C. XXXX. I've already asked you a question, Arbas. Please pay attention. I'm not going to answer it again. I don't mind answering questions people ask, but if I'm not going to pay attention, that's the one thing that annoys me. People who just ignore when I give them a proper, in-depth answer. Yes, yeah, Steve for Deutschland. C for Canada. So I'm not quite sure what uh, you've spotted there, Vox. Oh, this one. Um, this is just a generic texture from the uh, fly-by-wire a 3 x cockpits. That's just a generic texture. You can just ignore that, basically. It's it's there in reality. It's your aircraft's um, tail code. But that is actually set to some small prop GA aircraft that I don't even remember the name of. That's just a, a, just a texture. You can ignore that, basically. Almost at cruising now, not too far to go. Uh, there's no VNAV uh, courage, there's no auto descend. You have to do it manually in all aircraft in the sim. Let's see, my destination not too far away. In fact, we really start our descent in a couple of minutes anyway. Not a long cruise, about 20 30 minutes of cruising. Uh, how do you want to descend from cruise? So, in all aircraft, if you send at if you descend 2,000 feet per minute at uh, 250 knots, you will lose 30,000 feet in about 80 nautical miles. So you can use that kind of base when you judge your descent, and you can do that. So your altitude times three. So we're cruising at flight level 350. So 35 times three, so 369, 515, so 105. Therefore, you start to descend 105 miles from the airport. So you base it on your descent speed or times your cruising altitude by three. Uh, why not let your co-pilot fly into the autopilot? Because using the... It's not a co-pilot, it's just an AI aeroplane and personally I think it's dumb. You don't use... Well, you never fly manually, co-pilot or captain, you just use autopilot. So, again... At the end of the day, if you, it's, it's, it's not co-pilot mode, it's AI mode. So basically, you press a button and the aircraft does the entire flight for you. That's not me. I'm here to fly. I'm here to do what I do. FPS. FPS right now is 20, 27, 28, 29, 30. So high 20s, 30. Outside the airplane, we're getting about 45, uh, 43, 44, 45. So again, mid 40s for that one. High 20s, mid 40s. 
right now we are heading towards Bomex from Tony. Uh, why do you vertical speeds? Climb not to the. Hang on. Too fast, yeah, that's definitely too fast. Uh, why do you use vertical speed to climb, not to take the altitude? Um, I don't trust it, basically. I don't trust it. Uh, thank you, Eddie, for the five euros. Much appreciated. Brim some maple syrup. <laughs> I'm trying to think, do we even have any maple syrup in the cupboard? I don't think so. I think they used the uh, pancakes last time. Cheers to that. Much appreciated, Eddie. Thank you for supporting the channel. Uh, there's a shared cockpit mod. Yes, sir. there's a shared cockpit mod out there. But not to the fault yet. Uh, plus, the air co-pilot also dropped out the air cruising. Just tried to say, yeah, like I say, not gonna, not gonna do that. Want to use manage speed again? Well, actually, manage speed is more down. To, well, hang on, just throw my spoilers to land. Let me just uh, give me a second. Better. Um, because the flight manager computer doesn't particularly calculate the speed and that too well, attitude especially, but speed sometimes as well. Again, it's just more, I don't trust it as much as I probably should do, and so I'm quite happy with uh, flying something manually until we get, until we get proper being out simulation. I don't mind doing a bit more of a hands-on manual flight. Uh, PC specs and description, Harry, but I'm running an i7-6700 processor with 16, uh, 32 gigs of RAM now, and a RTX 1660 graphics card. Uh, 55,000 are given altitude. There you go. Flights level steps. Level 350. Uh, so hang on. 10,000, 10, in feet. Yeah, so, if you look at the real flight plan, Air Canada 480, it cruised at 10,680 metres, which is 35,000 feet. So actually, 35,000 is the correct altitude for this Fox. Slow setting behind us now. Not expecting, a, not expecting another sunset flight, to be honest. This is live time right now. So this is what it is in Canada. Uh, will you try VR for the sim once released? Not sure, Christopher. I don't own a VR headset, so we'll see. Uh, why does the VAR say well, not to press 240? So this is airspeed. Ignore it. Useless, rubbish, ignore it. Follow either the max speed indicator or the ground speed in case, which in this case is 450. So, basically in an aircraft, speed is calculated via airflow into the pitot tubes, which is these two tubes down here. So, air's going into the aircraft, into the aircraft, into the aircraft, and what that does is feed a sensor, which uh, determines your airspeed. Because the air is thinner at a high altitude, Let's take this pitot tube, and therefore the reading is inaccurate. So your airspeed is 200 knots, but in reality you're going much faster than that. That's ground level 200 knots. So you either follow the ground speed, the I'll show you them all. So you either follow the ground speed, which is your speed relative to the ground, your true airspeed, which in the case 2453 is your airspeed as you really are going, or your max speed, which is based on the speed of sound, in this case 5.82. But uh, no, you should never follow the airspeed indicator above, well, above transition. Uh, we call this route Highway 401, which runs roads on the ground. Very nice. Uh, what's the difference? So, indicated airspeed is indicated airspeed that goes here, which is based on the pitot tubes. The true airspeed is the speed relative to the aircraft at how your cruising altitude is. In the case of 35,000 feet, with current speed, we're going at 453 knots relative. And ground speed is the speed of the aircraft relative to the ground, so if it doesn't take into account the fact that we're at high altitude, therefore away from the ground, so above the ground, if we're a bit lower, therefore less curvature left for that, we'll be a little faster, and so ground speed is based on the ground. Uh, what's a good average speed you're cruising at? Um, anywhere between Mach 0.82 and Mach 0.78 is a general kind of cruising speed. Again, once VNAV is a thing in this sim, you have that calculated for you automatically. 
Uh, if flying at 300 on that indicator for a long time, she's like she's been taking on this should have. Um, 300, you say, on that in Which indicator echoes? The primary flight display or the ground speeds, air speed indicator? Because 300 in this is overspeed right now, so if it's going 300, it sounds like you've been overspeeding the entire time. Then other, other factors like wind also comes into account, and therefore you need to uh, bear that in mind on these flights. Uh, find normally at Mach 185. I mean, for an A330, this is a bigger aircraft. A330, so bigger, longer distance aircraft generally can cruise at a slightly faster speed. So Mach 185 makes a bit more sense. Uh, just, so yeah, it's not like okay, then you're doing alright, then you think flying a little bit too fast. Mach 182 right now is perfect for this. Uh, can you please show a close to the plane's nose? The mask itself, I mean, I don't know. I'm not a massive fan of the masking. In the A320, I will say, I much prefer Air Canada's old livery compared to this one. The original livery had before this one, I much prefer it. This is a bit, I don't know. It's not my, uh, not my cup of tea. Right, we see the airport now at the end of our ND there. Let's jump down to the MCDU, enter our destination data, so click on new, click on new. ILS 06 left via the Alouette 2 approach. That's fine. Let's go to performance. Let's grab in our performance um, approach info. Let's grab the meter for that. So it's uh, so it's 11 not cutting to 3. Pretty fun one. A uh, few clouds are down 600, broken at 7,000, overcast at 11,000, uh, 2 degrees, g.8, sorry, minus 2, g.8, so actually no, it's very cold right now, Altimeter 2976, so we're going to have uh, a lot of fun with this approach today, right, So, da, 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 where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? 2976. Temperature is minus 2. Um, magnitude wind, so 28011. Transition 11,000. Decision 655. That's all in. It's good to go. In a couple of minutes, we'll be starting our descent now into uh, Montreal. You can see, we're not even halfway there yet. We're not even halfway there. We're really going to start our descent. Uh, New York traffic there. Uh, yeah, I use the stick, Chaos. I use the Thrustmaster Hotas Warthog. Uh, yes, yeah, so I use Drone Cam. Some of these. I use drone cam for this. Controlled by the X controller. Uh, she's that thunder. Thank you for the nice words. Go ahead and join the watch. So the clouds might actually end ahead of us. It's like slightly clearer skies for the landing. Uh, which aircraft is up by Microsoft Flight Not Released? Uh, 737. 100% a 737. Have you ever used the 3 1 rule? Uh, what's that, Ariste? What's the uh, 3 1 rule? Okay, well, I'm actually going to change my. Thumbnail, my land. I'm gonna make this the thumbnail. It just looks bit, yeah, that's my current thumbnail. I'll probably save that for a later date. So this is a bit more, uh, a bit more realistic. To what we're flying right now. So I'll see in the chat. <clears throat> perfect. Perfect.
Uh, if I track our site on whereby I can give you a link. Give me a second. There we go. So if we track our flight today, this here is our tracking link. If we should follow along and do that via that map there. <laughs> Three dollars to everyone, Jared Reed. Uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, uh, Hemak, this is Microsoft Flight Simulator. We're landing on runway 06 left. 06 left, Magnus. Um, in real world, altitude is managed by the pilot right to see. Um, generates by, well, you're given a flight plan, and the flight plan determines your cruising altitude. So the flight plan is in charge of everything. The plan's then given to ATC, given to the pilots, and so it's done by a computer before you can take off. Um, has anyone made a custom airframe for you who needs to improve? Um, no, that's under. Just use the standard F20 C open out. So, as in a couple of moments, we're we'll ready to start descending into Montreal. <clears throat> I mean, you can use the maths, or whoops, you can just uh, use the chart. So, sim brief, last page, top of descent is just after Eptos, have about halfway down, airport on the ground. Yeah, so we spend more time climbing and descending than the actual cruise part itself. So, Iptos, we are just about to pass now. Yeah, but once you pass it, we'll start our descents. Uh, is that a big dip on your one o'clock? Um. I mean, I don't know what the Big Dipper is, but I'm just going to say yes, because <laughs> why not? <laughs> I presume it's a landmark that, uh, well, you guys know, which I don't. Uh, do I use Flight 24 Yes, I do, Harry. If I ever, well, if I ever hear an aeroplane that I don't quite recognise, I'll have a look at the map. I use that for a ABSB exchange. Uh, when do you think an add-on gate parking system will be released? I mean, um, GSX. GSX, there's no release date for it yet, but we do know that it is currently in the works. There you go, waypoint now. It is very much in the works, so it's just really a case of waiting for that to release. There's one in the work, but don't know yet. Uh, how much will descent are, sorry? Descent in about 30 seconds. 30 seconds till descent. First things first, it's a uh, our speed now to about that. 0.72 down to the flight plan. We need to be down to 4,100, 4,160. We'll go down to uh, just 4,000, I guess. So press you 2,000 feet per minute. Seven. Probably started maybe a little bit too late, but it's not going to cause too much of an effect for us today. Um, have you ever tried a real life cockpit experience? Uh, no, I haven't, Hemac. I've not been in a full size cockpit before, but uh, don't. Well, I've, been, I've, I've flown a real aircraft, it's GA microlight stuff and gliders, but uh, not a full flight sim experience sit down cockpit, no. <clears throat> um, is it going to be anything like Grand Hunting Deluxe? Uh, nope. Not yet, Ludwig. Not yet. Uh, I like your Christmas jumper, but yours is better. I've got another jumper somewhere. And also, let's have got something planned for later, which uh, I'm sure everyone will enjoy. <laughs> Thank you, uh, RSA's wife. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, 
I'm going to use that speed indicator to keep slowly crawling up the uh, ND there, the speed tape. That's what causes the uh, problems later. We rise a bit too high or a bit too fast. Uh, welcome, Ed. How are you doing? Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the chats. Oh, very nice, crazy. Good luck with the new year. Um, is my supply some of the optimized or are they still terrible frame drops? Um, it's, you only get drops in some of the larger cities, uh, fading is, but not looking too bad. Uh, yes, flight, we're using default weather. Welcome from Sweden, welcome, uh, welcome Gabriel, how are you doing? I'm gonna turn up the backlighting since I've realised it's night, well, it's now night time, so I need to see something with the, uh, aeroplane. So a bit of backlighting, we want to go and miss. Up. A little bit of a sunset behind us. And now, it's going to be peaceful. Uh, no autopilot, Ponye. No autopilot today. Well, we are using autopilot, so no issues today. Uh, not fan of, uh, you should never use uh, flop watch dome. Um, flop watch, you should, never, you, you should never use dome lights. You only ever use dome lights on the ground. In the air, you never use it. Basically, in reality, it causes glare on the windshield, and as a result, it means that if, a, if the windows were properly reflective, right now we'd just be seeing a massive white halo where the lights are just being reflected from the back. So. In reality, you should never use dome lights unless you're on the ground. Uh, can you do a short flight on Christmas evening? We'll see. We'll see how my uh, day is. I mean, I'm volunteering on the 24th, 26th, and 27th for the railway. 25th, we probably try and squeeze something in for sure. Are you going to ride 737 200? Once it's out, absolutely. Once it's out, I will absolutely find 732. There's so many of these Canadian Northern Region airports that will be fantastic to explore in the, uh, the first gen Boeing 73. Uh, when do you use the lights for the engines? Only for landing. Um, engine lights, well, which one about? Are you talking about landing lights or wing lights? Because it's a different answer for both. And then wing lights, different answer depending on where in the world you are. Uh, 737, so there's a Freeware 73 release, no one knows yet. There's the PMDG 737, which comes out in quarter 321. The Milvis 732, no release date yet. And then the 737400 kind of just went a bit, well, it's kind of disappeared a bit. But apart from a few teaser screenshots, nobody knows really. Uh, can you do a train while stream on Christmas Day? Probably not, train fan, probably not. I mean, I get enough complaints about trains and streams as this is. Christmas Day, I get like a massive backlash to that for whatever reason. I uh, hope Musk gets an RTX support soon. We'll see, Alexander. Right now, waiting for DX12. Uh, I use a joystick. Darius, the Thrustmaster, Hotas, Warthog. Alright, Seabelts on. Uh, which engine the most? 737. 737, absolutely. Um, I'm going to be playing Cyberpunk 2077. Not sure about Cyberpunk. I've seen good things about it, but I'm, I mean, I'm still playing through Watch Dogs uh, Legion right now. I may. I might do. I'll probably. What I'll do, I'll probably wait for it to come out on the sale. Pick it up slightly cheaper than full price, and then I'll start playing it. 
Um, do you know how to fly Dreamliner? Yes, I do, Ramney. I have another couple of flights in the 787, works on flight sim. Uh, how do you find Microsoft Flights? What do you mean only at 1660? I think it's fantastic. If you're looking for a budget graphics card, 1660, I can't recommend highly enough. And uh, yeah, works absolutely fine. So the first time train fan TV, no need to spam. Uh, how do you know when to turn on the off the seatbelt sign? Uh, so turning it off when the aircraft has departed, no, tur no major turns and steady level flight. Descent. Generally around 22,000 feet. Sometimes higher, sometimes lower, depending on the approach. But around 20 to 22,000 is when you'll turn these spot signs on. Um, have you ever landed with Birdie? Uh, what's Birdie, Aristo? Have you tried to reflect him? I've already asked that question, Ahmed. He's still not paying attention to any questions you've asked I've answered. Um, does anybody know where he is? On a map, there's a map. Right now, we're just to the southeast of Montreal. Uh, yep, Concorde. So that's coming out by DC Designs, partnered with Just Flights. That'll be a fun one to look at when it comes out. Should be, uh, oh, should be an interesting start to uh, high speed travel in Microsoft Flight Sim. Is 60 gigs of RAM necessary for Microsoft Flight Sim, Master Travelographer? Uh, I'd say yes. I mean, given that I upgraded from 16 gigs to 32 gigs because 16 wasn't enough for me, I'd, I mean, 8 is the minimum, but if you want to run a, a smooth flight, I'd say push for 16 at the very least. If you do 32, do 32, but 16 at the very least. Should check, actually. Um, yeah, so 109.3, that is Fine, set the performance up just good. Needs to be on raw two nine seven six. It's quite low pressure that, but uh, we'll set it. In fact, I'm gonna set it now just for the sake of um <coughs> how low that is. There we go. Is there a light that allows the passengers see the engines? Uh, yes, that's called the wing lights, which is this one. So, in regards to wing lights, the only time you ever turn them on is during an ice inspection. So, wing lights, you don't really turn on unless you're doing an inspection of the wings for ice. In America, that light is always on. Regardless of what time of day it is, regardless of what you're flying in, wing lights are always turned on. But the rest of the world, wing lights only during an ice inspection. Uh, how should PC? Um, again, it, the, the costs build up over time as you upgrade system parts, but I'd say around 750 to 800 the system cost me. Average FPS about 13 in the cockpit, 14 in external views. Uh, you're about to see a pit specialist got you. Uh, we'll see about that, Ludacris. Like I said, I don't, I don't use multiplayer myself, so... Whatever we see. Oh uh, yeah, flying at night. We'll get a few complaints about that. Um, am I a real pilot? No, I'm not William. I am not a real pilot. Off to my office job tomorrow morning, Monday. Uh, reduce our rate of descent now to about 1,500. Soon... Ooh, the speed is way high. Soon pass through 10,000. Uh, mods. Mods are all in the description, Marco. My list of mods are all in the description. Cabin crew. 10 minutes landing. 10 minutes. Cabin crew. 10 minutes landing. 10 minutes. Welcome, Mickey J. How are you doing? 
Welcome to channel, welcome to chats. How are you? Um, have, how have you learned so much about flying systems? Yes. Simulators, research, and I'm the kind of person that whenever I'm bored, what I'll do is I'll go look at an article on Wikipedia, and if there's a higher thing to another page, I'll middle click it, open it to a new tab, and build it all up. Even my uh, my Kobo ebook reader is just full of news articles and whatever else that I'll pocket, I'll save, and then read up on later. I just love reading, researching, learning about new things. Uh, how come it got dark quickly? Because it's winter. I mean, it's winter. It always gets dark quickly. Um, how do you time in landing? Because it tells me about 10 minutes. Also, when you pass through 10,000, that's generally about 10 minutes to go. We're about 40 miles away now. 40 miles. Still speeding up though. Need to uh, adjust that. Uh, can you compare FSX, x and FS2020? Um, FSX is dead. If you're using any flights from that generation, use P3D. x is very good for flight dynamics and systems, but not as pretty as this. Well, Microsoft Flight Sim is very good for the eye candy and scenery and modelling, but because it's a new platform, some of the systems are not quite there yet. Also, modding, not fully utilised, but... I'd say for Microsoft Flight Comparison, I'd wait a little bit longer and sit some more mature, then I'll do a more in-depth comparison video. But I will do, I will do it on stage. Uh, you found a lot of times when you like to stream descents. Uh, let's say it really depends on where you live, Ludwig, or what your local uh, setup is. But generally, you only use winning lights for inspections. Uh, yes, it's current time, I'm here. It's current time, like I've said before. You're the only critic ever for timing. Uh, train was fine. Train was fine. Then. If you go to my Instagram, actually, yeah, if you go to my Instagram, uh, check out my stories. You can see my uh, my uniform of choice today was quite uh, quite well protective. <laughs> uh, like, oh yeah, last another ten thousand. Cheers for uh, reminding me, Hampus. Thank you very much. I keep I keep forgetting about that recently. I don't know why. I keep forgetting about my landing lights. Yeah, that's better. That's more like it. Uh, everything getting quite uh, I will get a PPL or an NPPL at some stage, for sure. It's just a case of uh, when, really, when I decide to uh, go and do it. Uh, PAX, yes. PAX debut sign is turned on. Turn on the uh, landing indicators as well. 30 miles to go. 7,000. We're going to reach the same rate to about 500 feet per minute. Uh, altitude, altitude's already set, Diego. Altitude's already set. Set a long time ago. Uh, how long do we land? Less than 10 minutes. There you go. If you look at the ETN top screen there, it's only about 7, so 7 minutes till we're landing. So I'm going to be about 3 early today, which is good. I think you're a bit too low. Uh, maybe a little bit on the low side, but don't forget, we're only about we're about 20 miles from the airport now. Only about 20 miles away. I'm sure by the time it starts slowing down, that will allow us to uh, bleed off a bit of speed later. Uh, watching for we watching the uh, Wolverhampton Liverpool game. That's uh, a painful one for Wolves fans. <laughs> I know because my father's a Wolverhampton fan. He's not enjoying this game. Uh, the fact that Pax is using UK time is so confusing. Um, I mean that's not Pax. That's Fly Life Studio. And also that's not UK time. That's well, it is UK time, but it's Zulu. It's um, Universal Coordinated Time. So every aircraft anywhere 
every flight 100% uses Zulu or UTC for timing. Doesn't matter where in the world you fly, you always use Zulu. Uh, resolution 1080p Kais, 1080p. Fresh bang on the app. Yeah, yeah, so actually you say all too low. We're bang on right now, bang on in the middle. So reduce speed to 220 knots. Uh, some people claim Microsoft Flight is more like a game simulation, what do you think? I'd say, wait. It's early days. Microsoft Flight Sim does need that time to mature. So, I'd say, wait. I'm going to pair it a little bit later. And allow to have that time to update to mature and get better. And then, we'll see. 200 knots. Uh, Georgia Devo Suffer. No, I don't. I live with my family. Uh, yes, I know the Solar System 747, Steve. I've also done a video on it. Check it out. Recommended. So, two. Over speed, really. What's the uh, flaps 2 limit, then? So it is 200 knots because of the wind speed that gone up a little bit. Okay, that's fine. Now we'll go down to 180 then. A bit surprised that caught us out. Down to 1,500 feet per minute. So we've got cloud cover up to about 2,000 feet. Clouds until 2,000 feet right now. I'm not going to see too much anyway with the uh, current weather. Uh, yes, path. I do live with my parents still. Right. It's ready to land shortly. Ooh, I just realised that's still set. Okay, give me a second. So reduce now to 1,000. So on the localizer. Send a little bit faster to get the aircraft down. 70 knots. And at ten, uh, 7 miles, we will lower the gear. Uh, not sure about Cat 3 Gaddo. Gaddax, sorry. Depends on what the uh, runway is capable of, but we will have a look when we get there. That's 3. Cabin crew, seats for landing, please. Seats for landing. Cabin crew, seats for landing, please. Seats for landing. Approach mode set. Now reduce speed to uh, 125 knots. That's our approach speed. <clears throat> Medium brakes, spoilers, armed. Right, so seven miles, load landing gear, and then we'll do our pre-land checklist. Uh, localizers for the heading for posh. So localizer just your heading to face the runway. In approach mode takes you down the glide slope. You're down. So, let's do this. Gear down, three greens, brakes set, spoilers armed, cabin we will check, <clears throat> flaps we will set to two and four, three land checklist complete.
five miles to go. Ludicrous, ludicrous, I will never do a bush trip because of that. Thank you very much. Right, let's bring the aircraft in for landing. I'm not going to glide slide for some reason. We'll have to, uh. Hmm, okay, hang on. Yeah, cross slide stop on a glide slope there, so we're going to have to do this by hand. Basing everything off the instruments right now. If we miss it, we miss it. Go around is a very viable thing. Let's go... 1,000. Stable approach, miss approach, altitude, sets. So, right now I'm using the two magenta diamonds, 100 above. The two magenta diamonds to guide us in. Minimums. Speed-wise, all right. Aircraft will reduce to one, two, five. Runways inside. Bits of the left, so make a small adjustment for that as well. Just small adjustments to keep the aircraft going Four. stable. Small adjustments. Three hundred. There we go. Committed. We are committed. Just a heads up. If you look at the ND there, Cat 1. This runway is not Auslan capable. Thrust, thrust sets. Eighty knots. Six knots thrust, thrust cuts. There we have it. Welcome to Montreal. So you can see, this is a Cat 1 runway, and therefore there is no auto land, even if we wanted it. We had to do a manual landing regardless of the weather on this runway. <laughs> butteration, butter ski, butter sigh, buttering butter. <laughs> The local time is 5.10 p.m. and it's currently about negative degrees Celsius. Mm, negative degrees centigrade, very nice. Please remain seated until the aircraft up. has come to a complete stop and the seatbelt sign is turned off. Remember to use caution when opening the overhead bins as items may have shifted during the flight. If this is your final destination, Looks like we thank you for flying with us and we hope to see you again starts. Since it's negative uh, for you right now, we will not be turning off the anti-ice. Alright, well, let's uh, navigate down this very, very snowy taxiway. Over to Gates. Um, announcements of packs, FB2417. Announcements are TFDI design packs. Uh, don't use default ATC fill, I only ever use iVal for ATC. Uh, not the game ATC, never, never used it. A little bit throttled since, well, snowy ice taxiway is a little bit more throttled to get going. Uh, can you do a stream using Airtool? If you have heard since Sims 3, uh, maybe one day not. But I'm quite happy with PAX. I'm quite happy with PAX. You are now legally forced to speak French starting now. Oh, do I have to? Okay. Uh, well, I'll, I'll give it a go when we get to the terminal. Get myself prepared for that. Let's finish on French. Right, I've 
got a, a message up in French. We'll uh, have a go with that. Get to gates. Almost on the taxiing. Try and find the stand with all the uh, fancy gate equipment. And we'll bring it to an end. Oh, I just realised the rear door's open. Hang on. Why is the rear door open? Uh, that's just, well, the second time that we've had a door open on taxi. In this case, last time it was the front door. For some reason, our rear right door is open. Hang on. <clears throat> uh, please only ask for passengers to remain seated until we get to the gates, and to please refrain from opening the rear doors. Please return to your seats. Thank you. passengers to remain seated until we get to the gates and to please refrain from opening the rear doors. Please return to your seats. Thank you. Oh gosh, even chat's going in French on me now. <laughs> We're almost at the gates. Almost there. Thank you very much, uh, Van, for cutting me across there. Crossing a closed runway, therefore no need to avoid any traffic in this occasion. And I'm now looking for a stand with all of the ground vehicles in place, ready for the uh, services and all that. Uh, Warwick Stu Air Canada use plain sky blue livery. I'm not sure about sky blue livery routes. I'm afraid that's not something that I can uh, give you too much info about. Plane parks there. Same thing, a lot of aircraft parked, therefore a lot of stands we can't actually use, but they're a bit more into so going a bit slow. Actually, I've about a minute 30 early, so timing's alright. Uh, had no taxi to gate without taxi ribbon, um, it's not too difficult. You know, the, uh, you know the airport layout, so I'll probably make a guess where you go. Funny bug with doors, plus I haven't had them yet. So this is the second time I've had the door, the, uh, door bug. I just opened the doors randomly a bit too early. Man, this, this, this snowy taxiway really changes your taxi um, thing. I tell you now, even going in a straight line off one of the lines, really uh, a really difficult process this now. The necro parks there, so we don't use that stand. You're going to the international terminal. The international terminal departs from Canada. It's a domestic flight, this. Ah, there we go. This looks to be our stand. So I look at the left. I'm going to turn off the tax lights now, so not going to blind the ground crews. Wait for the man the ones to guide us in. There's a taxi line. If not looks like to the left of it. Uh yeah, we're fine. Perfect. Let's go down. Idle and stop. Cool. Break sets. APU available. APU bead sets. Engines off. Seatbelt signs. Ah, hang on. Logbook. Got rid of that. Thank you very much. Uh, Seatbelt signs off. Off here as well. Turn on the dome lights. 
and turn off the beacon lights. Alright, let's give this a go. Hang on, cancel that, cancel that, cancel that, try again. Uh, bon via. Now I'm messing this up for them, am I? Hang on, why am I can't do this voice message now? Give it a second, call down. Uh, bon via Montreal, it fed more and toi. Non's voir sur haltations de bon voyages. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Montreal. Local time right now is currently quarter past five. Local time shout outside, minus three degrees centigrade. We thank you for flying there, Canada today. Wish you a safe and almost journey. Merci beaucoup. This is Cabin Crew, the Sundolds and Cross Jack. It wasn't, it was an attempt. Bon vieux Montreal, it fed more and toi. Non se voir sur les haltations de bon voyages. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Montreal. <laughs> At least you tried. Right well, so I spent about five, six years studying five, French, I should be better at this. Should be better at this. Uh, let's try that again, shall we? Uh, Bienvenue à Montréal, il fait moins toi, nous vous saurions de bons voyages. Something like that. <laughs> you, you think you qualified to be Canadian pilot? Alright, <laughs> uh, well, we'll disembark. Well, Jabbridge Connect has it. Yes, it's uh, connecting now. So we'll give it a few seconds and then we will start the disembarkation. And then we will. Drop the flight report in the chat and bring things to an end for today. Uh, Favourite plane, 747. Uh, you start when you're one. Probably helps if you're a French or a French speaking country. A for effort. <laughs> uh, I spent 13 years of your life studying French again, Alexander. Yes, yeah, I when you're one. Uh, what can I say? <laughs> Are you on Discord? On the Discord channel, Alexander. Like I said, I see you on streams all the time, but I never see you talk on Discord. Unless your Discord name is different to your YouTube name. I see your name all the time, just never on a, uh, never on here. Also, is that Jetbridge not moving? Uh, Jetbridge, Jetbridge, Jetbridge. There we go. Let's try it again, shall we? Uh, you're from French-speaking country, Canada. Yes. Are you from the French-speaking side or the English-speaking side, Theo? Actually, I don't know what part of Canada you're from. Butter is le beer in French. Le beer. <laughs> there you go. So we'll allow that to. Okay, the jet bridge isn't long enough, so the jet bridge kind of just hangs off slightly away. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, you may need to jump to get into the airport. So right, we'll expedite the boarding. We'll see what we can do. No problem. Thank you. Jump in the cabin. You see the aircraft now relatively empty. Goodbye, Timothy. Goodbye, uh, Maurice. Goodbye, Eugene. Goodbye, Abigail. Jack. Uh, no, no, come back, come back. Uh, Andrew, Brenda, Emily, Angela, Kristen, Jay, and the rest of you. Right, let's go for this end of flight report, shall we? So, menu, end flights. Air Canada 408, 81 Neo from, uh, from Toronto to Montreal. 51 minute flight time. Departure time is 21. Departed 2117. Arrivals 2210. Actually, arrived about a minute early. 103 passengers, 94 satisfaction, 103 touchdown rate with a block time 107. Soft landing. Uh, wish I'd given you some food. A short flight, come on. Uh, Rohingya at work, good to see. If I drop the chat or well, the flight thing into chat now for people to enjoy it or scrutinise, you can do so. <laughs> Language please are coming for you. <laughs> Uh, the great passenger mini game. Right, so there's the end of flight report. Take a few seconds to upload, but it will be there shortly. Otherwise, um, yeah, that brings us, I guess, now to the end of our streams for this weekend. So, thank you guys for watching. You guys have all been fantastic. Like I say, as always, for the subscriptions and the supports and donations and everything, you guys are fantastic. I mean, we hit 25,000 subs this weekend, so that's a massive milestone, which I'm thankful to everyone. 
being able to do for us. And uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it's now onwards to onwards to fifty. We'll see if and when we'll get to that number. So I'm going to use that guy for. He wants a shout out. Instead, he's going to get me used for spamming. I can find my phone. It's so sad. So so sad. So thank you guys for watching. I wish you all a very pleasant evening. A very pleasant, well, very pleasant week ahead. You all take care. Have a good one. And I shall see you again in the very near future. Take care and good night. Bye bye.